Chapter Twenty Four of the Tale of Grandfather Mole. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Victoria Neely. The Tale of Grandfather Mole by Arthur Scott Bailey. Following the Plow. A good many of Grandfather Mole's neighbors sneered at him and said he was queer. Mr. Blackbird was one of these scoffers. Though he was a lazy scamp, he always managed to look sleek and well-fed, and he liked the same fare that Grandfather Mole did. "'You're a goose to work so hard for your food,' Mr. Blackbird jeered one fine spring day as he sat on the garden fence and looked down at Grandfather Mole. "'You ought to change your habits. Just look at me. I get plenty to eat.' and I do precious little digging for it, believe me. I tell you, there's a better way than yours. Naturally, Grandfather Mole couldn't look at Mr. Blackbird, but he raised his head in his odd fashion. What's that? he inquired. What's a better way than mine? But Mr. Blackbird was in no hurry to tell all he knew. Suppose, he said, I should explain my method to you. You could follow it for some weeks and live well without much trouble. And then— when the spring ploughing is finished, I should want you to supply me with angleworms for the same length of time. You know, you can't expect me to give away my secret for nothing. But I like to dig, Grandfather Mole replied. You may have noticed that I am built for that sort of work. What Grandfather Mole said was true. His drill-like nose, his powerful forelegs, and big, strong feet all served to make him the fastest digger in Pleasant Valley. Mr. Blackbird regarded him with a sly smile. "'You seem built for eating, too,' he observed. Grandfather Mole soon confessed that Mr. Blackbird's mention of angleworms had made him so hungry that he was ready to promise to do as Mr. Blackbird had proposed. So Mr. Blackbird cried that it was a bargain. "'And now,' he said, "'listen carefully while I whisper the secret, for I don't want everybody to hear it. "'I follow the plough,' he explained." It turns up a great quantity of angleworms. The only work I have to do is to pick em up with my bill. Somehow Grandfather Mole did not appear as delighted as Mr. Blackbird had expected. How can I follow the plow when I can't see where it's going? he asked. Silly, Mr. Blackbird jeered. You can find your way along a furrow, can't you? Grandfather Mole thought he could do that. But you're forgetting Henry Hawk, he reminded Mr. Blackbird. Farmer Green plows in the daytime, and Henry Hawk might see me. "'He wouldn't be likely to notice you if you crept along the bottom of a furrow,' Mr. Blackbird assured Grandfather Mole. "'Anyhow, I'll be there, and I'll warn you if Henry Hawk appears in the sky.' Grandfather Mole was relieved, and Mr. Blackbird told him to be ready the next morning. End of chapter 24